Hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to greet all of you in front of our project team. Uh, I hope that you will find today's meeting productive and useful for your future work. And I would also like to thank you for your participation. Uh, those of you who are watching over our Facebook Live, please feel free to, at any moment during the event, uh, ask questions or write your com comments, and we will make sure to address them during the meeting. So to begin with, I would like to share a bit more about our project, uh, VET VR Kit. So please allow me to share my screen. Hopefully you can see my presentation now. So our meeting today is organized in the scope of an Erasmus Plus project called uh, VET VR Kit. Uh, it is a small-scale uh, Erasmus Plus project in the field of vocational education and training, and it is going to be implemented during the following 18, 18 months. It is completely funded by the Erasmus Plus program with a budget of 60,000 euros. The goal of the project is to raise awareness amongst adult and vet educators about the innovative teaching tools and to raise their competencies on how to implement VR technology in their classrooms. Our ultimate aim is also to transform adult and vet trainers into trainers 4.0, and those would be trainers who are confident in handling modern technologies in their teaching. The planned project results of the VET VR kit project include a development of a tech-based toolkit, also the development of a methodology with good practices and policies for better use of VR in classrooms. Uh, we are also going to build a platform for VR trainers, which will include learning scenarios, learning materials, and much more. And our goal is also to build a network or a community of VET teachers in order to allow them to uh, exchange experiences and share good practices. We believe that our event today is actually a first step towards building this community and connecting VET teachers to VR companies and VR providers and also sharing, sharing some good ideas. Uh, the VET VR Kit project is uh, coordinated by a Greek organization called Persuasion, and the partnership also includes a Greek secondary school from Larissa, two organizations from Spain, they are Inertia Digital and Somos, and also two creation institutions, an NGO called Life Quality Enhancement Institute and an adult institution, uh, an adult education institution also from Croatia called Studium. Uh, so now uh, I would kindly ask the representatives of uh, every institution that I have mentioned to present themselves and also to share a bit more about uh, their institution. Uh, I think that we can start with our project coordinators, uh, Persu Persuasion. Uh, thank you very much, Sabella. Thank you very much for uh, presenting uh, the project. Uh, I know that it is uh, too, uh, it is a little anxious for you, but you don't have to worry. Uh, because I believe that uh, among us, there is a, a great uh, community of uh, trainers and companies that uh, we all have the same goals uh, to improve uh, our learning uh, approaches and methodologies. Uh, and this is uh, the reason, uh, that's why I want to help, uh, to thank everyone that is uh, attending, especially some private companies that we will present their products and their services uh, today. Uh, I would like to say just a few sentences for Preservation. Preservation is a Greek NGO that it is based in uh, Larissa uh, and uh, focuses on uh, bridging the, the gap between the innovations and uh, uh, markets and uh, the classrooms. Uh, this is why we like to uh, have projects uh, that are related with uh, technologies and uh, disruptive tools like uh, VR, XR in general, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, etc. Uh, I don't want to say uh, uh, anything more. You can find information in uh, our Facebook page. Uh, 
uh, about uh, us and about the project. So I will give uh, the speech to to the next one. Am I allowed to am I allowed to give the speech to the next one? Sure. To to Mr. Enrique Picon from Inertia Inertia Digital. Yes. Hi, everyone. Thank you, John. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you to everyone. Uh, my name is Enrique Picon, and I am the project coordinator at Inertia Digital. Uh, Inertia Digital is a vet center founded, founded in 2010 and specialized in training and innovation in digital skills and entrepreneurship at the international level. Uh, we want to internationally promote training and innovation in digital skills and entrepreneurship in education for workers and for citizens in general. We have work and we are working in different virtual reality projects and it's a pleasure for us to be here working with you on this project. On this project. And we are sure that this project will be a success. Thank you very much to all the attendees and we hope you find it very interesting. Okay. So who's next? Uh, 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 Mr. Caravas, would you like to, to say some things about your school? Yes, yes. Okay. First of all, hello to everyone. I am Zizis Caravas and my colleague here is uh, Angelos Papadopoulos. We are from the Sixth Pal of Larissa. We are a vet school, night vet school. So the reason that we came, we take part in this project is that we want to implement VR technology in our classes. We have a lot of uh, specialities in our school. So I think uh, the use of VR kit toolkit, it is, the, it is a good opportunity to expand our teaching methods. So uh, as the main goal of the project is to uh, implement the vocational uh, schools, uh, the VR toolkit. Uh, I think that we are very pleased to implement this uh, technology. That's all. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. So who want to introduce next? Uh, I think that we can now go on with the NGO from Croatia. Isabella can maybe present it. Yes, of course. Hi. Uh, the Institute for Improving the Quality of Life is an association yeah. that operates in the area of Vukovarsko Srijemska County, uh, mainly town Vikovci, and among other target groups, we work with young people. The name of uh, the aim of the institute of itself is the promotion, implementation, organization, and development of the entire culture of healthy and quality lifestyles for entire population. Uh, that includes measures for uh, health, health prevention, uh, recreation, uh, physical activity, as well as activities related to environmental production, uh, protection, sustainable development, education, and prevention of social exclusion. Uh, we do that through uh, the whole series of recreational, cultural, uh, preventive, and educational health measures, uh, among uh, with other measures. Uh, we gather a significant number of volunteers of all ages, and uh, uh, that is the connection of the Institute and our environment and uh, aiming population that we want to target with our projects. And that's about it. Uh, we uh, do recreational and sports and cultural activities and events. We develop uh, our preventive measures and uh, include uh, people of all ages and that's it thank you Isabella maybe we can hear uh, something about uh, Somos now from Julian thank you so much uh, John and Andrea it's a pleasure to be here and uh, Somos Europa was born seven years ago in the south of Spain and uh, we are focused in the youth, uh, young people, because we detected that the young people in the south of Spain, also it could be in the south of Europe, and uh, they have uh, some difficulties with the language and also with the soft skills and uh, principally uh, digital skills. 
So we started in this area and during the years, uh, we try to improve the digital skills of the young people uh, with different uh, kind of projects like with Erasmus, also with uh, regional projects. Uh, after all, uh, we started uh, wor uh, to work with uh, some dif uh, different high schools and schools and uh, with the bad education. So this project is very important uh, for this kind of uh, institution because um, uh, can try to improve the tools and the methods for the trainers that they, they can have. And so it's a pleasure uh, to be part of this project and we hope that we can uh, improve the tools of the teachers and trainers. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, finally, there is the adult, ed uh, adult education institution from Croatia, Studium. Uh, so Studium was founded in 2010, and since then it has become one of the leading adult education institutions in Croatia with locations and uh, school centers in five different cities throughout the country, but also various educational activities throughout the whole country. Uh, we currently implement over 200 different education programs in the form of reskilling, upskilling, micro credentials, workshops, academies, and uh, much more. Uh, also, Studium is very active in the field of EU project development and implementation. Throughout the project, uh, we're trying to raise the uh, competences and to raise the employability of uh, various target groups in the society, predominantly marginalized groups. Uh, and also, we are trying to raise the aver awareness about the importance of lifelong learning in the community, but also on the EU level. Uh, we are interested in innovation in teaching and we are all, always trying to develop new educational programs and uh, to advance the existing ones so they can be in line with the demands of the labor market. And uh, we believe this project is a great step in that direction and are also uh, very happy to participate uh, in this project. Uh, so now that we have all uh, introduced ourselves, I would like to say more about uh, today's agenda. Also, I would once again like to uh, remind everyone that if you have any additional uh, questions about our institutions, just feel free to type them in the comments. Um, so for today, the main purpose of our meeting today is to receive and share knowledge about using VR in our classrooms and in our institutions, organizations. Uh, we would also like to um, like for you to join the network of VET VR teachers and trainers from all around Europe. And we would like to hear some good ideas and good practice examples from VR experts and VR service providers. Uh, for this purpose, here with us today, we have uh, VR company representatives from Greece, from Spain, and from Croatia. They will present some of their products and services, and we will also be able to hear uh, more about some successfully uh, projects which were previously completed in the field of uh, using VR tools in education. Uh, before we start, I would also like to invite all of you to join the social media of the Vet VR Kit project, our Facebook page, and also a teachers group, uh, which was developed with the purpose of networking. And we'll make sure that all of you receive an invitation for the teachers group after this meeting. Uh, so I believe we can start with our first presenters. Uh, I would like to introduce our Lithuanian guests, a company called MPro. They're going to talk about their EU-funded uh, VR projects. So here with us today, we have uh, Ms. Audra. So you can take over, please. Hello, hello. I'm trying to find out my slides. I hope that I would get them soon. Sorry. I thought that I would be able to share immediately from my screen, but 
it doesn't look so. Uh, on the screen. Yes. Do you see my slides? Hello. Yes, we can see your screen, Nadra. You can go. Yeah, on. perfect. Okay, so then Love is from Lithuania. And um, as I have been introduced, I do represent the Lithuanian NGO company, Motivatsini Projekti, which is actively involved in EdTech, especially in VR, Web3, with the main purpose to support and spread the innovations. So as our main focus is researching the potential of the metaverse uh, for the virtual classroom creation, student engagement throughout visual learning, interactive experience, and other VR experiments. We are excited to share that we have the EdTech Center, which recently established by the Lithuanian government. The mission of the center is to empower the educational system throughout promoting the cooperation between the educators and technology providers. Last year, at the center organized their first ever educational in metaverse conference, which gained significant interest from the both sectors. So please allow me to share our good practice of the cooperation between technology developers, teachers, students, and us. Uh, so with the help of uh, VR software technology providers, we are created practical gamified trainings for the vet, schools, high education institution to show the potential of the virtual reality technologies in formal and non-formal education. Our award-winning practical training, how to avoid getting lost in a virtual world, met the needs of the educational sector. Uh, actually, we are bridging the gap between the generations and encouraging teachers and lecturers to start using VR and finding possibilities to implement experimental VR activities in their classrooms, eh, either it's within their subject curriculum or to use VR for improving physical activities or even the emotional health. Also, we had the, uh, uh, one initiative with the uh, students from Vilnius College of Higher uh, Educational Institution and our um, partner Zen Republic VR Studio where we, during the five months, conducted the pilot soft skills training along uh, with improvement of student physical activities using several virtual reality applications like 11 table tennis and the Zen fighters. At the end of the training, we organized the Zen fighters VR sport tournament. Also, we carried out the focus group research to analyze students' experiences while they're using virtual reality for the physical activities and the soft skills training. The results showed that the students found VR to be very entertaining and they reported that learning was much more effective as in VR they do not have anyone to disrupt them and they did not have any disturbance. Also, as you see here in the slide, um, 95% of the students they mentioned that they would like to repeat and they would be interested to participate in the future VR sport tournaments and even to volunteer by organizing it. So in addition, uh, we run, uh, we're still running. Uh, we started last year, uh, quite similar project as, as you do, uh, but it's related for the schools. 
So far, we delivered uh, the gamified trainings for our project partners, also organized the local sessions uh, for the school's teachers. As well, we are conducting, we're still conducting research uh, for our, our main project outcome, which will be the VR toolkit for schools. So, and overall, we cover everything from the first steps uh, to deep research on how VR technology and the metaverse could change our lives. You could uh, look to our website uh, to find out more about our project we, we are having. And I strongly believe that the importance is the partnership between the education and the technology experts. And our biggest mentor is the Thomas. He is founder of the Zen Republic VR Studio. And if you're interested, uh, you could follow him on the Twitter or Discord channel. Thomas, along with uh, his team, Daniela and Agne, helps us to develop effective solutions for the educational sector. Yeah, so I'm asking you to team up, whatever you need. As for the further projects, uh, to become a partner or the training service provider or just a consultant. So thank you very much. Any questions? Thank you very much, Audra. It's always inspirational to hear such uh, good examples and some ideas. Uh, let's see if we have any comments from our viewers. Uh, they're saying your presentation was very interesting. No questions uh, for now. Thanks a lot. Yeah, no, no questions for now. Yeah. So once again, uh, thank you very much. I'm sure we can uh, keep our uh, cooperation throughout this project, but also throughout some new uh, EU projects. And uh, now I would like to present the first VR company, which is going to present today. It is a creation company called uh, Zulex, and it's going to be presented by Mario Mikic Vucak, its uh, CEO. Uh, so I think it is uh, the best to give the floor to him and he will do the best introduction for uh, the company. Hello. Well, hi to everyone. Thank you for this uh, opportunity for me to present uh, our company. In short, uh, we are uh, Colex XR Studio, a team that has been operating since 2011 uh, with a speci specialization in XR technologies. Our primary focus is on creating XR solutions, mostly in education followed by tourism, medicine, and even corporate corporate training, which also can be set in education. But don't let me speak too much. Um, I want to show you some things that we've done. <clears throat> uh, I can start, uh, start the presentation, I suppose. Okay, per screen. Okay, so... We've been uh, in a lot of uh, educational projects and um, I can confirm everything that uh, lady before me said. It's true. Uh, one of the things uh, we are most proud of uh, is a project that we did for library, city library. Um, and the city library has this bus filled with books and this bus goes around and fills, gives books to kids in elementary schools all around the, the country. And um, it takes virtual reality sets also. And this virtual reality is filled with educational, um, educational content that regards this country. So kids inside learn about its country. And we are proud since kids from the like four, four, fourth grade talk about uh, our Nobel Prize winners like they are cartoon characters and they know something about them. So it's not coming from the books. Um, I will play now this video that shows um, this project. 
So this is the bus and here is how it looks in the action. Uh, Mario, sorry, if you are uh, if you are showing a video, I think that we are uh, we can see only your oh sorry with the sorry. Slide, not yeah, your yeah. video. Okay. okay, thank you, thank you. I see what I did wrong. I should have shared entire screen. Here it is. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Okay, so I get you get the idea. Uh, I don't have much time, so I want to show a lot of stuff. Um, this will be short uh, presentation of our company, since um, I will try to talk uh, when the presentation is going. Since we made a lot of uh, books with uh, augment reality, we have a, lo a lot of inquiries uh, for books. Um, also uh, holograms that um, are used in uh, meetings um, also <laughs> we worked with um, colleges that um, use uh, uh, vret it's a virtual reality exposure treatments and we built applications for uh, people with uh, certain fears to overcome the, those fears um, uh, and it shows to be um, uh, like most efficient way, since our brain cannot uh, perceive uh, virtual reality as being fake re uh, reality, reality, we do uh, trigger flight or fight uh, system, and we correspond uh, to that. Um, we had a cooperation with a college uh, that uh, uses, uh, that teaches uh, anat uh, human anatomy, and um, I will show you soon. The, here, here is our application that we made for them, where teacher can use human body and uh, layered it out, so we can use like only bones or only muscles or only nervous system, and uh, put this body in certain position, <laughs> like um, I don't know if you are doing jumping jacks, and then you pause the body, and then you can show uh, with a laser inside virtual reality. Um, on this body where mostly problems come out from this type of exercises or this type of posi positions. Uh, there are 11 headsets and the students are all inside virtual reality with teacher that shows them human body in a real scale. Um, and uh, uh, here is uh, augmented reality uh, where we built, um, uh, let's say, past, um, past uh, looking city, uh, town square exactly, in Winkovci. And you can walk through this town square looking uh, through this tablet and seeing how this city looked a uh, hundred or more years ago. Um, so what we are trying to uh, do and we most likely uh, we, uh, we mostly love to do is uh, 
educational purposes. So we had a project that we did uh, with uh, Conchar. Conchar uh, is uh, one of the biggest uh, biggest um, um, factories in Croatia that uh, assembles uh, transformation transformers, and um, we did um, a virtual reality application where you can learn how to build this uh, transformator inside of the virtual reality and uh, they use it for <laughs> educating their newly uh, employed uh, employees um so we are like uh, um we we firstly started as a um, uh, game room and we developed uh, to xr studio we have now over 50 projects and um we enjoy it to work uh, this, with this technology. Um, I'm sorry, I just forgot all the English I knew. <laughs> I, knew. <laughs> I hope that there is um, some kind of uh, questions, but uh, there is a lot more from this company and um, projects that we are doing, actually. So uh, if you need anything more, I can uh, provide uh, for you. And briefly, we'll go through our um, presentation um, where we can see uh, another kind of uh, educational uh, softwares. So this is uh, virtual reality uh, where we uh, re re reincarnated uh, history events from our war. So um, the kids, when they go with schools, they go to these uh, memorial centers and they can look through virtual reality glasses how some of the war, um, let's say, uh, facts are relieved in virtual reality. Of course, they are not gruesome and they are not uh, uh, <laughs> mentally. Uh, they are all uh, suitable for kids. Um, this is the first virtual monument also uh, in the, in war in Vukovar where you are presented um uh, where you are presented with the flight over the Vukovar in the middle of the of the war um Bibliobus is the uh, first project that we did for education where you are in the room and you interact with all kinds of um all kinds of items and you get some kind of uh, information as a feedback uh, this is a this is a, a virtual reality christmas tale where you you actually sit in the in tram in the let's say electric bus and you drive that around the town hall and you actually let santa claus uh, to get in and drive inside of your bus this is virtual reality uh, a treatment uh, or therapy, uh, exposure therapy, um, where you have to encounter uh, contact with spider or snake, and you are actually connected to all kinds of medical uh, apertures where we measure your heart or breath, or even if you are sweating, and it's shown to be uh, where if you even go one or two meters as far to come close to. To your fear, your heart rate starts to uh, raise your your sweatiness. You start to sweat, and by that uh, we are trying to do actually uh, a much a much bigger software actually for <clears throat> for virtual reality exposure treatment. Uh, human anatomy. I showed you this uh, briefly in video, and we have also uh, augmented reality. Um, projects. Uh, this is window into past. I show this also, and uh, interactive logo is uh, self-exemplary, um, and this is uh, souvenirs that we do for cities or even books uh, that are relieved with uh, augmented reality. So um, this one, this project was actually really uh, good for educational purposes. It's uh, it is made for uh, elementary schools and uh, it reacts with panels inside of the school where kids can scan this panel and this little robot is going to communicate with the kid actually helping kid to understand how to how to uh, act on uh, web and uh, who to trust who to not trust and 
to help uh, children cope with the uh, with the internet bullies and this this is one this was one really interesting uh, project uh, 360 all of kind <laughs> we do uh, uh, we do uh, 360 and hologram with webxr also um thank you for your time and i hope uh i get maybe some kind of a question <laughs> Actually, I cannot see. Thank you very much, Mario. I cannot see any questions. Sorry, Andrea, for interrupting. Okay. But uh, since I see that you have a lot of projects and uh, all of them oh, are yeah. interesting, uh, feel free to join the Facebook page and uh, whenever you want. Uh, and we hope that uh, you do that uh, often. Uh, you can upload information and uh, material for each of these projects. These are very interesting. And I think that, that the time slot is too little. To present yeah everything. yeah it, it it is i agree and uh i'm actually missing the uh, last two years of projects <laughs> um and okay I, I will sometime put those projects uh, up uh, thank, thank you indeed for this short but very uh rich uh, information uh, rich presentation we have seen a lot of uh information and I also see we have a question now. Uh, we have a question. So do you have experience with creating the practical part of adult education programs? Uh, no, we haven't done adult education programs. Uh, only thing we've done, we've done uh, for adults are um, this program to learn how to assemble something in factory. But actually, uh, it's uh, it is not um, how to say it's not so 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 much different. Only thing you have to consider is uh, for the, for adults is if they have uh, some kind of special needs to be taken care of and uh, how much are they really into virtual reality since we've had experience uh, most uh, uh, most adults or let's say like this uh, adults mostly don't want to get into virtual reality uh, some of them are even uh, all, uh, sick of uh, they have uh, this um, sickness uh, motion sickness uh, on the first glance, but some of them, some of them actually can use uh, uh, virtual real reality uh, uh, like uh, without without any problems. But what we did uh, was we actually built for uh, senior uh, citizens. We built two applications where we recreated uh, their past. Um, how we recreated them? Well, we recreated. Um, uh, their homes to be how they were like 60 or 80 years ago and then when you put uh, vr on grandma or grandpa and they relive this uh, motion of um of home like um when it was poor and and it was uh, no electricity or let's say no tv or anything uh they had uh, like um a really good reaction to that uh, nostalgic reaction reactions and it was like therapeutic for them uh, so that's the far furthest as we uh, went uh, uh, with adults thank you we hope that we will go even further with uh, adults because we are mostly adult education institutions and uh, we're trying to achieve that throughout this project so hopefully there will also be progress in this field and i see that we also have another pro uh, another question uh, it is a question related to the creation of vr content uh, so mm -hmm. the question is uh, can we for example through this project or some future projects train teachers to actually be the creators of the content for their subject or is it always necessary to hire a company and uh, they need to create a vr content for uh, teachers uh, so um it's both it's <laughs> let's say it's both uh, for now vr is um, uh, created by professionals um we may see soon uh, uh, arising new applications that will allow the teachers to simply create some kind of um i i would like to say simpler applications 
uh, but um, the pro uh, problem is mostly in um, in applications that you are uh, asking for something that have, hasn't been done yet and it, it doesn't have any way to implement it without creating it from the start. But we, we had um, one inquiry, we, we didn't uh, actually get, uh, the job didn't even be, uh, even uh, 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 the job wasn't even uh, completed, but uh, we, uh, we, uh, we, we wanted to make a, a application like this for faculty, where you can actually uh, program uh, your application inside your web browser so you put uh, objects and you put what you want to uh, for those objects to do and what you want to be a result and uh, all, all kind of uh, questions and answers and uh, logical uh, connections and then when you save those settings this kind of uh, vr scene appears in virtual reality so your student you can actually create a program or a question or education uh, uh, for your student and he goes into inside the virtual reality and he goes and learns something or or solves exam or anything like that we actually wanted to do that for uh, mathematics since uh, people of mostly are visual types so we wanted to make uh, some connections between uh, formulas or mathematics with uh, shapes or colors. Also, we wanted to do that for law, uh, where you have to learn a lot of uh, um, law stuff. <laughs> so uh, we wanted to connect those uh, uh, um, law, uh, uh, how, how to say, I don't know, quotations with certain uh, objects. And when you learn something, that uh, has connections, you can actually use objects to connect those things and get result. Um, uh, project uh, actually didn't even start, uh, that, that was uh, trying to say, but we hope someday we actually m could make something like that, that can be actually, a, a, uh, it can be put on any, any type of education, any type of uh, class. Uh, thank you very much, Mario. I see that we have another question, but my suggestion is to maybe save it for the next uh, presenter, uh, not to wander too far from our uh, agenda. Uh, once again, thank you for your very interesting presentation. I would also like to remind everyone once again that um, the all of the companies presenting today are going to be a part of a publicly available list so you will all be able to contact them and uh, perhaps uh, develop some new project ideas or uh, you will be able to uh, maybe even fund uh, some vr content for your own institutions and just share ideas and practices so uh, later on, you will be able to contact amongst each other. And now I would like to present uh, our next company. The next company comes from Greece. They are called VR Academy. And uh, here today we have uh, their representative, Konstantinos. Uh, please take over the floor. <laughs> Good. Uh, Mario, uh, that was a great presentation in its... Uh... It's an honor to have all these uh, people that started working for uh, augmented reality, virtual reality before these people, before these technologies were uh, common. So I'm very honored to be in the company of uh, people who started the metaverse because before the name became a hype. So I guess uh, QLEX Studio is one of these companies, and I'm uh, I'm very glad uh, that we also represent a part of the a part of this philosophy in this market. Um, VR Academy was built uh, with that uh, information in mind to bring uh, the virtual reality to great publics, companies, education, organizations that needed to speed up a bit their digital skills and uh, become uh, digitally capable. Uh, let me share my screen uh, and go into the presentation. I'm sorry for that. So I want the entire screen. Uh, can you all see my presentation? No. Uh, I cannot see that. Can, uh, are you sure that 
you chose the screen and pressed OK. Uh, let me try again. So um, yeah. then I go to the share screen and uh, share screen, share tips, share screen. And it gives me the option for the full screen for a window. So I go to the, let's say, full screen. So let me try window. It doesn't uh, allow yeah. me to share the window. Let me ask you a question. Are you using a uh, Mac or Windows? I'm using the Mac, but I am on the Chrome uh, browser. Uh, do you think this is a problem? Uh, Probably. Uh, let me. Do you see any presentation now? <laughs> no, it doesn't uh, give me the the sign to to allow you to uh, share the screen. I cannot see some. Do you press OK? Um, yes, I did again. Uh, is it uh, is it a, a web page that you want to demonstrate? Maybe I can share it for you. Uh, to share it, I want to share a, a web page. Can, can you send me the page the web page so I can share it for you? Sorry for that. that Probably be, it's the Mac. <laughs> it's the Mac that's causing the trouble. Technology. Uh, mm -hmm. Or there is a button that says allow to share the screen that you cannot see that. Uh, probably, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm setting on the chat, right? Yes. yes. All right. So... So before uh, before everything is ready, if it's not ready, we're gonna go. Let's say play it by ear. Um, so VR Academy was created uh, in order to care for the needs of the virtual reality market in Greece. And um, what we've done by far is we have a wide range of services, and this wide range of services wants to are designed to actually make virtual reality accessible to businesses, the um, educational organizations, and the government. So these services include uh, the rental problem, uh, program that we have. Uh, we have lots of uh, VR equipment and Microsoft HoloLens, so we can rent them uh, on demand. And uh, that's dynamically priced according to the days and according to the uh, use of them in different organizations. We wanted to give the businesses uh, the opportunity to test uh, before they invested anything in virtual reality. So... Uh, we started with a B2B clientele, so we had companies like Nestle joining in, Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola, whatever you can imagine from these great multinationals in uh, the Greek market, their branches. And um, we started out with uh, virtual reality meetings using, uh, we were virtual, virtual uh, reality resellers for these meetings at the beginning. So we started using these VR meetings in order to teach uh, personnel to engage into more meaningful communication during COVID. And it was um, a great opportunity for us, and it has been a, a very lucrative market. At the same time, entering these companies, we realized that they needed more than just meet and hold their meetings. So we started uh, our plan, which is our core business, to scan entire places, entire spaces, industrial areas, so we make the digital twin of companies, and based on the digital twin of companies, um, we create uh, the digital twin of a real space. So for Nestle, we uh, finished. We 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 are just finishing two uh, large areas um, of over 20, 200, sorry, twenty thousand square meters. There are two main manufacturing uh, facilities uh, for coffee and water. And uh, based on that, what is the digital twin? It's basically exactly what you have in the factory within, let's say, the digital space. So we, we, we tell the companies that your first step to the metaverse is basically to build this digital twin. And then in this place, you can meet with other people to do anything, to hold meetings, uh, to support, let's say, manufacturing procedures, to show the way and the different levels of uh, health and safety uh, training. Uh, what Mario was discussing also about um, education, for adult education, we are using, in this sense, in, uh, uh, in this digital 
di digital twin uh, productions that we have. So basically our two core businesses is the VR rental program that we have and the VR uh, tours, as we call it. And we, we give this openly to hotel industries, tourism, uh, manufacturing like Nestle, as I uh, discussed, uh, heavy industry. And um, these are the two drivers that uh, actually uh, drive us in the market. And uh, in the last two years, we've been trying to get involved with uh, uh, school education, which is why VR Academy um, is right now getting this name to provide education for teachers. We have a working project in Egypt with two international schools. We're using 3D virtual learning environments so that uh, the majority of the teachers can be trained to use this technology, can create their own lessons, and can actually uh, move up the scale of digital maturity of using these technologies in the, in the school setting. As far as the school setting is concerned, and as far as our project in Egypt and in Greece uh, with uh, virtual learning environments in schools, we faced many difficulties and many challenges, uh, mainly having to do with the connection of the internet and with the equipment that uh, the schools in Egypt, in Egypt, but also in Greece, uh, are using. And we have been successful by far in implementing it. And um, in the last year, we have been uh, value-added resellers for a great organization called uh, Eon Reality. Probably uh, my colleagues from the VR uh, sector of the economy are well, probably they know about this uh, group of companies. Uh, there are two videos, uh, Yanis, that I would like to share. So we can show adult education being created by the teachers themselves, but also by the students themselves using AI. Um, will I be, if I can send you the yeah, link? Yeah, you can, send, you can send me the link. By the way, the Canva link that you sent me uh, uh, demands some uh, authorization. So if you can give me the access to that, sorry for the delay. I'm sorry. Yeah, you can send me anything so I can sell it. I can sell it. Very good. Sorry about that. Canva. Oh, Christ, uh, I can see. I just gave you the authorization, Yanni. So, it still doesn't allow you to, to access. To access. Yeah. Uh, sorry okay. about that. Let no, me. No. Uh, you the first link that uh, uh, we can share with the public so you can realize how VR and AR can play a great role in the adult education. So that's the first one. I'm also yeah, sorry for that. Okay, and I'm sending right now the second one. Excuse me, so we can watch this. Do you want me to share the video first or something else? Um, the video, please. I'm going to send you right now the second link. Okay. So these are the first two links. Ah, you have access to my Canva design, right? Yes, 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 I have access on the Canva design, yeah. Wonderful, okay. So that was the super presentation I prepared, but <laughs> was not able to actually uh, share it with you. We're going to share it probably another time. So... We created this um, uh, company in order to solve the problem of the digital 
uh, gap that Greece is facing. Imagine that Greece uh, back uh, four years ago was in the 27th position out of the 28 digitally mature markets in Europe. You can realize that we had to <laughs> get over great uh, problems. Um, for this purpose, we uh, built a digital innovation hub in the center of Athens. Uh, we got involved in the creation of VR worlds, which are basically 3D representations and digital twins. We helped host many VR events in different companies and in schools. And our core business has been to create the digital, uh, the digital um, twin technology with the VR tours uh, meetings that you see in this uh, event. So uh, using these uh, tools, we started uh, getting the market mature for um, virtual reality. And probably that's one of the best uh, uh, solutions we use for adult education and for university education and also for vocational schools. Uh, Yanni, if you can play the merged XR process, no problem. The presentation, we can say, yeah. So we can present, let's say, a tool. Make it for the beginning, probably, yeah. Thank you. Our market is getting uh, agnostic, which means it goes away from any kind of device. You use here a simple uh, iPad to scan any kind of object. And as soon as you scan it with the technology that Eon Reality has, you can add anything into it. And uh, all information that has to do uh, with the presentation that you have, like let's say an engine here, anything that you can find on the internet, you can insert it and embed it. And you let the AI of the system to create the lesson for you. You just have the, let's say, basics of the lesson, you feed it into the, into the AI, and the AI, the AI creates a lesson for you as you see it. This is an example of how augmented reality can be used in any kind of context. And it's based on the digital, digital twins technology. Anything that you can imagine can be built. Imagine that you have to, uh, you are speaking about engines. It's there, you can do it. Uh, you're speaking about um, uh, history. It's there, you can do it. Uh, geography. Uh, the system provides all the different tools that you need in order to build a very helpful lesson. At the same time, behind this system, there is a learning management system that actually records the performance of all the uh, students and gives you information live of what the students can do. Can we move on to the, uh, the last one and uh, the second link that I send you, uh, Yanni, if you please, that has to do with the AI. Uh, that's again the... Um, That's one of the latest editions and versions of uh, Eon Reality. And, and it, it is one of the most recent ones. They're using artificial intelligence and avatars in order to be able to insert the avatar into the real environment. So imagine that you have a class and you have, let's say, a, a, a class ready, either at a university, at a vocational school, or at an elementary school. You can get the AI into the environment and the AI, the avatar, can be seen through the iPad or through a mobile phone to the students. It can answer any kind of information that the students may ask of the avatar. The avatar is fed with all the information in, uh, uh, in the internet, and this can help generate lots of meaningful discussion. Um, what you're watching here is no, you can even build, let's say, simple classes of cooking, and uh, you have, let's say, anything in the kitchen, and anyone can actually um, become a good chef using this. So, either from very complex context to very simple context, or the context of uh, a class at school, uh, Eon Reality can make this uh, a reality for us, based on the technology of digital trends. So that's about it. Uh, probably our time has passed. Good. So 
I was there. We had, uh, let's say, more time on going through the presentation. We can send the presentation. It's going to be there available for you. So whatever questions you may have right now, you can ask me. Uh, if you if you allow me, Constantinos, uh, sure. I will uh, upload uh, also whatever you sent me on the Facebook page that we created. Yes. Uh, sure. And uh, I would like to say sorry for the bad bandwidth uh, and the internet speed. That's why it had a, a bad quality of uh, video, etc. Mm -hmm. Sorry for that. But you know we are in Greece and our infrastructure. We have this problem. I understand. So. Uh, uh, Despite the technical challenges that we faced, um, virtual reality is not something that belongs to the future. Virtual reality is here. And um, meaning that all organizations, educational institutions, business and government um, are now taking steps, have now been taking steps in order to grow in the, the, into their digital maturity. So we are there to cover for every need they have with equipment, with, uh, let's say, um, having a well-set uh, class for a school, for geography, history, mathematics, chemistry, whatever you can imagine. We work with institutions to help them uh, get this done. And that's about it. So thank you, Yanni, and thank you, Andrea, for this. Thank you very much, Constantinos. This is a great bridge for the next speaker, our next speaker, uh, who stays in touch with uh, these disruptive technologies. Uh, I think that if you two met, meet each other, uh, because you are from Greece, uh, you will have a lot to discuss about. So, Andrea, I will let you uh, mm -hmm. do the do your job, do your thing. Thank you, Kostadinos, Thank you. once again. Thank you. Uh, thank you to both of you and uh, to VR Academy. I think uh, we can all agree that we can't wait to see a bit more materials in our Facebook page and in the group and to explore uh, your presentations a bit more. And uh, now, as uh, John already mentioned, uh, we have the next uh, VR company, also from Greece. They are called the uh, Future Cats. We have uh, Mr. Dimitris here with us today. He's going to present them. So they are a digital marketing agency based in Athens and uh, in Thessaloniki also. And uh, they specialized in, in cutting edge technologies such as XR, AR, VR, and metaverse. So let's hear a bit more from them. Hello, hello. Thank you very much for the introduction, Andrea. I will do a very short presentation without sharing any slides in order to be as efficient as uh, possible. So uh, my name is Dimitris Dimitriadis. I am chief innovation officer at the Future Cuts. Future Cuts is a company that focuses in the latest advantages as regards the digital world, including Web3, virtual reality, augmented reality, and of course, the metaverses that they are now being built. And uh, our main focus is to help businesses stay up to date to the newest technologies and, uh, and trends. So uh, at the Future Cuts, our main services, because uh, we are a, a Web3 marketing agency, is improving brand visibility. So we are helping businesses establishing uh, presence in this new era. And of course, uh, the metaverse, we are a team of... Uh, uh, 28 experts remote uh, from 2018, before it was cool out of COVID. So uh, our uh, our work uh, benefit from this experience of uh, these professionals as uh, regards how a brand stand out and how we can use uh, our latest uh, innovation. I will. Uh, uh, share a few key points as regards our uh, recent uh, project that we did with uh, Regeneration and Piraeus Bank. Uh, we did an event uh, about the metaverse in the metaverse. And uh, of course, I will share all the material in order to upload it. Uh, we have a video, we have some presentations in order for you to, uh, to see everything. So as regards uh, what we did, uh, and uh, we uh, implement a lot of 
virtual worlds. Uh, we are from the architect side. So we start building worlds. We are using 3D technologies or 3D technologies and AI. Uh, AI these days are uh, really, really prominent to text to space. So you prompt and you create all the assets and you launch it into the metaverse. We partnered with uh, Spatial, which is a metaverse platform, and we create a venue in order for regeneration training. Regeneration is uh, a, a company in Greece for upskilling and reskilling of uh, young talents. So we cooperated with them and we create a virtual uh, venue in order to do a training for the metaverse. Uh, we had more than 250 concurrent participants live with their avatars. They created their avatars uh, using uh, our API. We connect uh, our API through Ready Player Me, which is a, an avatar technology. And everyone created an avatar and uh, joined uh, the training. The training went really, really smooth uh, with people really enjoying and understanding how the avatars will work, how we can be uh, in the metaverse, that the metaverses are not just one, but many. And uh, of course, after that training, a lot of people visited with their avatars the venue and an NFT gallery that we built uh, for uh, Piraeus Bank. And we had uh, a great experience creating uh, all that. From the other perspective of a digital uh, agency, uh, we see that a lot of new or already established brands are taking space into creating VR experiences, into blending experiences with NFTs and uh, uh, decentralized uh, uh, assets and we are here to help them and uh, there are a lot of new VR experiences and uh, metaverses that we are going to launch uh, even this year. That's it for me. I tried to keep it short and uh, sweet. John, I'm here uh, if you want to uh, have a discussion and uh, move forward. I am muted. Dimitrios, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to, to tell to the audience that uh, we at Preservation, when we want to make a research about uh, metaverse and VR technologies in Greece, uh, you are one of the persons that we uh, look for your publications and your articles, etc. Uh, thank you very much. And yeah, th th thank you. But uh, this is the value for the of the and the purpose of the whole meeting that uh, other person, other people can know about you, and you can know for uh, from other companies and technologies. Uh, sure. We have uh, one question, Andrea. If I'm right. Uh, yes, actually, we have two questions. So Great. I would invite both uh, VR Academy or, and the Future Cats to feel free to answer them. The first question is uh, your opinion about what is better for adult learners, so for adults, VR content or augmented reality? Uh, my answer is both, because we have uh, we have cases that the immersiveness of a VR content uh, is useful and you need to immerse the user in order for the user to learn and to understand all the nuances of the training. For example, if you are uh, training someone to use a very... Uh, complicated machinery about servicing an Airbus, for example. There, you want the first type of training to be a VR training. Why? Because you can immerse him into the environment and he will have more dopamine release, so he, he will be uh, more interested to the training. And of course, he will 
play in a 3D environment, which is how people learn. And uh, according to our experience, we see that uh, we uh, add a next level of training with augmented reality in order for someone to have a uh, real uh, real time and of course uh, real field experience so in the beginning the first part it's vr content and then uh you we we use augmented reality in order to uh have something that is uh on top of the actual reality and seals the experience the immersive experience with some field training. And uh, as far as we are concerned, thank you, Dimitri, for this. I sent you the mobile and the email so we can connect probably. I saw it. I saw yeah, it and yeah. I really enjoyed your presentation. Uh, I hope it didn't have so many glitches, but it's okay. I enjoyed no yours. <laughs> so, as far as the question is concerned, and um, this is uh, basically a question that uh, um, is uh, is really into our minds. It also, I may add a, a dimension on what uh, uh, Dimitris had just uh, said. Uh, for early adopters and for, let's say, young users, we have seen that it is better for them to start with the uh, augmented reality applications because also of the full immersiveness of the VR headset. So when you're talking about, let's say, five-year-olds, uh, six-year-olds, seven-year-olds, until 11 or 12, we have seen that they are very much excited to use this technology. At 11 or 12, we have started using the VR technology, but with very little exposure to it, something like, let's say, a couple of minutes, until gradually we can see that uh, they are comfortable with the, with the solution. But um, in the essence of the question, I agree exactly to what Dimitris has actually said. Um, a recent PwC uh, report that it's available on the internet, we can see, is that uh, people who are involved in VR training learn four times faster. They are something like 270 times more engaged with the content. And they feel like they are there doing um, what Dimitri has just uh, said with us. So for the companies that we have served and for the education, we are using both. We're using augmented reality in order to lay the foundation for the basic training. And when we go to a bit more elaborate use of it, we are using the virtual reality. Virtual reality we're using for inclusion. We're using for, let's say, sex harassment at the workplace. We're using for health and safety. And, and you cannot imagine, I've taken the test, Andrea, myself. I mean, I started taking these tests and I can see that uh, my first test, I was something like, 45% in target. So I say I failed, <laughs> I failed a lot. So then after 10 minutes with the uh, virtual reality and the interaction with the artificial intelligence, I took the test again and it was 90, 80% in target. Imagine this only wow. took something like 10 minutes of exposure with the system and the immersiveness and the engagement that actually moved me from 45, a complete failure, <laughs> to 98%. So organizations see that. And there are companies in Greece and, of course, all over the world that are doing, and schools and organizations that have now defined new KPIs based on their digital maturity, based on how digitally mature the employees are, how they upgrade, as um, Dimitri said, with the regeneration program, how they upgraded and upskilled and unlearned their old ways to learn the new uh, virtual reality ways. So to cut a long story short, both of them are good and both of them actually increase the efficiency and increase engagement and they make people learn four times faster. So that's that's from, let's say, VR Academy. Uh, thank you both for your answers. Uh, we have another question. Uh, we have a question regarding uh, financial feasibility of using VR in education. So the question is, uh, how much financially feasible is it? Is it affordable for a school, for example, to develop a full series of biology or geography lessons? Or is it a solution that only a ministry can afford? 
so please, once again, both of you feel free to add your opinions. Okay, can I start? As regards augmented reality solutions, they are more and more affordable by the time we can uh, develop uh, augmented reality uh, almost uh, uh, great solutions with uh, Instagram filters or uh, Snapchat filters that uh, kids and uh, youth is already engaged with it. So if we go and uh, propose a learning that is going through these filters in order to use augmented reality, we have a financial feasible product and we have an engaged audience because uh, teenagers love to use these kind of social media applications that they already support augmented reality. So uh, it will be a groundbreaking approach if uh, we manage to pass something in a curriculum, a biology or a geography lesson that you load a filter on Instagram, on your own Instagram with your own device in many cases, because uh, young kids right now, they have devices and they use devices. And uh, from my personal point of view, it's really a thin line between telling uh, kids that don't use your device in the school uh, environment or uh, use it only in the breaks. So through the own personal devices and affordable uh, filters uh, in augmented reality, we can develop uh, full series of biology, geography, uh, chemistry, or whatever. Uh, and it will be a solution that even with uh, the tools that we have right now that are combined with AI, even now, uh, even a teacher can develop with no coding skills. Thank you. Uh, does anyone has anything to add to this answer, John? No, I think that uh, we're totally covered. I don't know if uh, Constantinos has to add. No, probably. Uh, Dimitri, thank you very much for your uh, insights. Uh, I think that you we, you are more than welcome to share your uh, material also in uh, the Facebook page. I think that you, from time to time, you will have a lot to share with us. And if you think that something is worth sharing, uh, you are more with than pleasure, welcome. With pleasure, of course. With pleasure. Okay. Uh, I can see Constantinos has something. Constantinos, yes. do you want to add something? Okay. Just one, just one thing. Um, I'd say that uh, because the technologies are actually developing right now, and uh, the cost is going down. So a school can actually afford to have, let's say, um, five, eight, or even 10 headsets uh, that can be used with artificial, sorry, augmented reality and virtual reality. This cost may actually, for, just for the headsets will be, um, we're not speaking about Oculus platform, we're speaking about other platforms, around eight to 9,000 euros. Um, and with this eight or 9,000 euros, you get access to libraries from teachers all over the world, many digital assets that you can use for your own classes and you can build your own class. And other platforms on top of what we discussed is you can use your own class, your own lesson to make money or for the organization to make money by creating, as Dimitris pointed out, an NFT. Imagine that you can create a biology class which belongs to you because it's a product of your own, uh, let's say, intellect, intellectual property. So you use this as an NFT and you can sell it in open markets. Every time someone gets it through the blockchain, they know it's yours and they give you the money. So it has gone through many stages, but right now it is affordable. The only problem, I wouldn't be asking if it's financially affordable, but if it can be well implemented. Uh, for us, it has, it has shown that we spent something like a year and a half in Egypt and in Cairo in order to build the first team of teachers that could actually adopt it and have it in their curriculum as an integral part of it. So the challenge is how do you adapt your own teaching methods to the new methods that are now in the market and are gonna be number one as a challenge. We say that teachers need to be digitally equipped to be able to make it to this new century. <laughs> so it's financially available, 
And the question is, we will be willing to upgrade our skills in order to be able to cover the need for digital training and VR training. So that's, thank you very much for this allowance of time. Once again, thank you. It's great to hear that such uh, innovative technologies are becoming more accessible and more affordable. Uh, but as we all know, such uh, endeavors can also be uh, funded through various projects. And for this reason, we would like to introduce you to another uh, project. Uh, here with us today, we have a company based in Denmark. They are called uh, Ludus XR. And uh, they will talk about an Erasmus Plus project called Vet VR Academy uh, that they have implemented. Uh, hello, Dita and uh, hello. Stefan. Hello, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, we are Ludus XR, and we are, as you said, based in Denmark. We are a game company, and um, we were formerly a part of the Resource Center for Integration in Weile but they closed us down in 2021. So our uh, bosses, René and Thomas, who are the CEO and CTO, uh, thought that was a bad idea. So they created Ludus XR. And we are working with games, mostly like uh, VR games and uh, conventional games. And we are only working in the ER, no, no, sorry, in the Erasmus projects. Um, we have created a lot of different projects like uh, VetVR, which we are going to show in a minute. But we also work with projects like uh, called something called WorkVR. And that is a VR game with an e-training platform to provide for vet students with an innovat innovation, <laughs> innovative learning methods. Uh, the game takes place in three different sectors in the healthcare, constructions and the hotel and service business and all the with all with different levels and tasks to complete and uh, this equips the user for better this equips the users better for the labor market through the increased level of linguistics uh, cultural and digital knowledge and i think uh, stefan is gonna show a little video about that can you share the screen yeah hello my name is Stefan, and I also work at Lutus XR. Um, I'm a programmer there. Uh, and if I can share my screen. Yes, and this one. Hopefully, you can see my screen now. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to show you some bits of this video that uh, shows you the the work VR project, uh, as Dita says, it's a it's a game where you can um, tr try and uh, like live the day of a of, of in different jobs. So we have a healthcare, uh, construction, and hotel and service. So for healthcare, uh, you are in this uh, retirement home and you go around and see patients and help them with uh, various tasks. So you see here we are helping patients out of bed and later on helping them to give them clothes and find food for them and so on. Then we have also construction where you come out to a construction site and equip you all the right tools and help you to learn. So you're like mixing cement, you need to build a brick wall, uh, work with some plumbing and some electricity later on. And the last one is uh, hotel and service where you are in a hotel and you are uh, working in the hotel and guiding uh, guests to their rooms and stuff. And also in the restaurants, help them to prepare and serve food.
So this, yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is a, an old project. A couple of years back, we made this, um, and I'm now also working on a new one called Late VR, which we're going to show a live demo of in a second. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Late VR is uh, also in the restaurant and service business uh, hotels, and it was uh, the meaning of Late VR was it was in COVID nineteen. It was uh, created or not created, but uh, thought of because a lot of uh, med students didn't have the opportunity or had a, there's a difficulty finding internships. So that VR is thought to be an add-on for internships where they can via virtual reality go in and try different tasks in the hotel and restaurant business. Uh, yeah, business. Um, so they learn to like polish silverware, silverware and uh, to set the table in a specific manner, like in this one, because uh, some of our partners are French and Spanish, they have to learn how to do it in the traditional French French way and Spanish way. And they also have to like mix cocktails and yeah, clean. <laughs> so we can show a small demonstration of that. Yep, let me just close this down. And now I'm gonna change to the headset so you can actually see the game in. Uh, in play. So let me just switch my audio so I can hear you through the headset in a second. Go. All right. I will just start. Game, you can see it right now. This is still a game in the development, so we're still working on it. We have some different levels and stuff. Um, so may some stuff may see a bit, a bit clunky, but uh, we will see. It. Let it load. There we go. Now I hope you can hear the audio too in the game, but uh, that's but that's a secondary detail. So yeah, we have uh, this uh, uh, restaurant we're in, the hallway, uh, and then you can select different levels. So we can have uh, some hygiene, some mixology where you mix drink at the bar, accessibility where you help uh, a blind guest to a table and uh, serve some food for him, or we can play the setting the table level. I will show uh, bits and pieces of some levels. So let's start the hygiene one. So the game takes place where you get some instructions from some NPCs in the game. I'm not sure if you can hear the audio. This is a computer generated audio right now. So no, we cannot hear the audio, but there is no problem for that. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's not audio, but yeah, you can see that we also have text. So she said I need to go to this uh, room here to get the correct clothes. So I will go in here and open this closet. And here you have to select the correct outfit. For, so you select some different stuff here. And you just select this one. Yeah. And then um, you go back and validate the task. So I did that right. And my outfit is correct. So now we move on. I'm not going to sit here and listen to all of this. I'm going to show you some stuff. So this is the restaurant for now. We have some tables and the bar over there. Uh, so one next task after collecting the clothes, you have to clean the tables and mop the floor and stuff like that. So um, after she's done talking, yeah, you can come in here. You can see there is some dirt on one of the tables. So you grab uh, one of this, glass on some water, and you spray it here. And then you scrub the table. Place these down, and then you grab the chairs. Maybe a little funky right now. We're still working on some hand posing and stuff on different objects. And then we have some stuff on the floor that needs to be cleaning. So you take this mob over here. And there we go. And dip it in some water. And then go over here and start mopping the floor. 
And I got <laughs> that's always good. Yeah, and then you clean around the, this restaurant. You can also get the vacuum over here and start uh, vacuuming the floor. So this is like one level where you have to do this different kind of task, and then you can take the sign off your done and put it down. Um, let me show you some other stuff from another level. So let me just reload the scene. We can maybe take the mixology. So I'm just going to skip this style up here and go to the bar. And right here, you can see we have a lot of stuff um, where you can mix different drinks. Um, so if I just press the space here and this one. So yeah, we can have all of these, uh, these bottles here. We can select and uh, pour stuff. So that Let's say we want to mix a drink. We can open this menu and say uh, we maybe want to make a pina colada. So we need to take some drinks, so mix it in the blender over here. We can pour stuff. Um, let's take this one. And then some coconut oil over here. And then you take this lid. And you can make some stuff and it will run, then you grab a glass, place it here, take this off. Right now this is, I, I, I think I forgot the ice and this is the wrong color, but yeah. You can then pour it up to the drink, add some different toppings to it, maybe an umbrella and a cherry, and then you can serve to the, to the guest. So yeah, this level basically is to mix different drinks in the bar, learn all the different the tools and stuff. Uh, yeah, and then other stuff in the restaurant, you can, um, in another level, you can go in here uh, where you can pick all the glasses and place down here and you have to set the table, as Peter just said. Um, and in here we have the kitchen where in the future, we, or in another test, you have to go in here and clean all the stuff, wash the dishes and all of that. So yeah. This is still a project we're working on, so there's a, a lot of stuff still needs to be done. Um, but yeah, we just wanted you to like get a view into the, how the game looks and plays and what we are doing in our company. So yeah. I think I will put this off now. Um, I will just uh quickly change my headphone speaker again so i can hear you <laughs> yes and i said we are like a game company so we rely very much on our partners in the projects because none of us are teachers or educators so yeah. we take like the partners knowledge and their skills and convert them into these games so that's our company <laughs> Yeah, and, and uh, most of the or, or all all of our projects are yeah are e um, Erasmus Plus uh, funded, yeah. and so that may also means that most of our projects are free for all uh, to download and use. Uh, yeah. So yeah, yeah, I think. Can, can I make a question based on that? Sorry, Andrea, if I interrupt you. Uh, you, because you mentioned that they are already uh, available, but they are still uh, a work in progress. No, so um, yeah. So the the work via project that you saw first uh, was a project from years ago, and that is already available uh, for the HEF five uh, back in the day. So now we are updating that project to work on the the quest, but it is available right now for the older headsets. But we are working on. The, the reason to the new one and the vet vr that you saw now that is something we are developing now and should be done like in this fall i think yeah it this should be the... done in december this year yeah and there there all people should also be available to find it on the app store i think so yeah, yeah. andrea am i allowed to do one more question please of course okay uh because you are a game development company etc uh, can you estimate how much effort uh, does it need to create uh, a scenario like this? Uh, for example, uh, what are the time that some a company needs, or how many people they are needed, etc. Hmm. Can you? Can I 
We have the question. <laughs> yeah, if we would like to, let's say, uh, partner and create a game like this, or a school wants to find your company and create a scenario that uh, uh, adjusts to their needs, how much time it is needed to create something like that? A, a working prototype, let's say, and uh, how, my, how big should the, a development team should be in order to create something like that? Well, uh, I guess that depends on the project. Um, yeah. And like uh, these projects we've shown you, have, we have like constructed based on a, like, a, uh, like a plan, like this is what should be in the game. And we cannot like add, we can add new stuff, but it's not something you can do in the game. But um, if you like uh, have had an idea for a project, you can just contact us and uh, a prototype and stuff that uh, we can work pretty quick uh, depending again on the uh, the project but it it doesn't um, take a lot of people to create uh, something like this like our company right now we are like six people uh, five to six people uh, working on this project so so yeah yeah <laughs> uh, i think oh. you're muted <laughs> i am muted thank you very much one more one more Feel free to share your links and uh, uh, your websites and where we can download this material if we want to use it in our uh, Facebook page. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. we will do. Uh, yes, thank you. And thank you also to John because I had the exact same questions. So I'm very glad that he asked them. And uh, yes, please feel free to uh, share all of these materials, uh, at least the part that already exists and that other educational institutions can use. And thank you for this great uh, practical uh, presentation of uh, what the activities actually look like. Uh, so as I see for now, I think we don't have any further questions. So we can go on with our next presenter. Our next presenters are a company from Spain. They are called uh, Tech Makers. And uh, they are an educational consultancy. They are focused on digital transformation processes of schools, teachers, and students. Sounds very interesting. So let's hear a bit more from uh, Jose Antonio Garcia, their representative today. Thank you so much, uh, Andrea. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so um, uh, thank you for this invitation. And uh, uh, I think that uh, it, it's a bit late uh, to, to present my presentation for. So uh, I'm going to show my presentation uh, from my screen. Okay. Did you see my presentation? And yes, we can see it. We can yeah. see that. Okay. Thank you so much. So, um, my name is uh, Jose Antonio Garcia, and I'm a project uh, manager and expert of uh, new educational technology at uh, TechMakers. First of all, uh, I would like to thank, uh, thank you for this invitation to tell about uh, our work. Uh, our intention is to help uh, you as much as possible in a Bed VR Kit project. And TechMakers is a Spanish uh, educational consultancy uh, that has been working uh, since 2015 with the school from primary, uh, secondary, high school and universities in terms of educational innovation, new methodology, uh, methodologies and creation of a new classroom of the, of the future. Um, uh, uh, focusing in, on the area that is interesting in this meeting, uh, that is a virtual uh, reality in, the, in education. Since 2017, uh, uh, TechMakers is creating uh, VR projects in different uh, kind of schools. Um, uh, today, uh, uh, makers work uh, with four uh, different uh, virtual reality providers uh, that have different uh, features. Um, the next, the, the first, the, the, the first option is uh, Educa360. Okay, uh, Educa360 is a, a Spanish company uh, that has uh, an own content portal that allows 
allows us to access 3D content from any device, uh, whether or not you have uh, VR devices. Uh, with this platform, with uh, Duca360, uh, we can create uh, different types uh, of 3D scenarios and also introduce uh, ourselves to the concept of the educational metaverse. Um, the next one is uh, Class VR. Class VR is, uh, is a British company uh, that has a content portal with more than uh, 1,000 resources and as has, has its own hardware devices. The third, uh, the third company that uh, the maker works is uh, VR Magister. VR Magister is a Spanish project for a, a bed school vocational training. And last year of the secondary school, uh, it has uh, activities uh, that focus on training students for their incorporation uh, into the world of jobs or uh, getting in investment for their projects. And the last one is um, Extinguisher. Extinguisher VR is an, another very important Spanish project to, uh, to be able to train and acquire new new skill within uh, the world of the uh, emergencies and risk prevention at work. Um, uh, as a conclusion, as you can see, uh, tech makers uh, have a wide range of uh, VR solution for education. Uh, and in, in any stage, uh, depending on the different needs. Uh, the most important thing for a school, uh, for school principals, uh, is the experience uh, we have of working in more than uh, 2,000, uh, sorry, 250 schools in Spain. Um, the teacher trainings, uh, in terms of uh, teacher trainings, uh, our companies advise uh, schools uh, that it is necessary and very important to offer a training plan for teachers and, and students. Acquiring only hardware devices, uh, VR devices, uh, for the school can be a diff difficult challenge uh, to set up. Uh, virtual reality is, uh, is too new uh, for the world of teacher and requires a partner, a company uh, with experience in, in, in this area, in this sector. Um, as you know, virtual reality is not a new technology. It has been with us for much, uh, more of than uh, 30 years. The truth is that the, the arrival of VR uh, in a school is very recent, and there is a lot of curiosity uh, for teachers to know the benefits of this uh, technology in, 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 the, uh, in, the, uh, in, in the classroom. Uh, virtual reality um, is based on a simple concept and also well known um, uh, that is uh, inspiration learning. We have, we, uh, we have all learned to play a guitar or play football. Uh, through experience and reputation. Uh, virtual reality is based on the same concept with the possibility of having a very high simulation range, uh, thanks to the number of uh, scenarios uh, that can be generated in this type of environment. Uh, one of the things uh, we like uh, most about VR is that uh, it is able to de develop the empathy, and the emotional uh, inte intelligence and creativity in students when they work in class on immersive content and scenarios. Um, I'm here, um, this next slide, well, we have uh, some keys uh, why VR in education is important. Learning is active instead of, passi uh, of passive, promote creativity and curiosity, the emotional intelligence. Um, uh, uh, of course, uh, curricular contents aligned for, for, for VR. Um, I'm going to, to, to pass the next uh, slide. Uh, here in, in this uh, slide, here are uh, some recent success stories uh, with Exul. For, for example, Programa o Talleres Impulsa, it's a program that introduced uh, digital innovation workshops in a school. Uh, in social areas with vulnerable economies and with the highest rate of school failure. Um, the next slide is uh, the uh, Aula Ateca, Aula del Futuro, is the classroom of the future. Uh, it's the start project uh, right now in, in Spain uh, to convert uh, bed classrooms into, into modern space uh, that allow the devol uh, development of new skills. The virtual reality is a mandatory element uh, in this kind of, of, of classroom. 
Um, the next slide is the project Reactiva FP or Reactiva Bet. Uh, it is a specific uh, program for vocational training schools and which has digital simulators uh, associated with the professional uh, branch of the school. This project has been created entirely with Educa360 and VR Magister. Um, uh, 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 in this uh, slide, uh, we have uh, CEF and CIFIER. Uh, we are talking about a training institution for school teachers. Uh, we have carried out a training project with this institution uh, in the field of virtual reality. In several trainings, we, we have told about um, uh, the virtual reality. It's very interesting for, um, for Erasmus, uh, for example, to use with project uh, or platform like uh, eTwinning. Um, okay, um, my PowerPoint is um, longer, but I'm alone uh, with uh, 10 minutes, so um, I, uh, I will uh, send you uh, the, the rest of the, this presentation. Anyway, uh, we want to indicate uh, some conclusions uh, as a recommendation to, to your project VR, um, uh, VR, VR Erasmus Plus. Um, we can uh, choose um, any of the uh, technology partners uh, that, uh, that we have indicated above, but we think that uh, Educa360, wait a moment, this platform, uh, can be a good option uh, for, the, for the following reasons. Uh, uh, the first one is uh, Educa360 is easy to share uh, links between teachers and students for different countries. And, uh, it's a simple click uh, uh, with a link uh, and it's a web platform and no need to install any app, uh, any, uh, any software uh, in, uh, in, a, in computer, laptop or device. Uh, Educa360 is an educational content for all school stages. Um, Educa360 uh, also uh, has the possibility of creating your own content with a educa maker educa maker is a tool integrated uh, within uh, this portal in educa 360 um if you if you allow me one minute i send you uh, through the chat a, a simple link a simple example of how how we can access educa 360 with a simple link uh, we can all access from anywhere with any internet connection uh, with any device, if, if you come, you can right now uh, accent and, and I wait you, uh, I wait for for you inside. Um, um, worldwide, uh, we are all on. I'm finished my presentation, and I'm open to any question uh, you want to ask me. Uh, we are willing to make a deeper demonstration uh, to show all the possibility of this project, uh, Educa CCC project. Um, uh, you have uh, all, all my, my contact, uh, my email and uh, telephone number. I will be happy to answer uh, all, you, uh, all your questions. Um, I'm going to copy uh, the, well, I'm going to refresh this page and um, I'm going to share uh, this link uh, to connect uh, all uh, people uh, in this in this room. You can go to the link. You can click, and uh, as you can see, it's uh, uh, access to web. Uh, you can you can access uh, with any device, a mobile phone, a laptop, a device VR, uh, with any connection of internet um, is very interesting and it's, uh, it has a free uh, subscription uh, option to teachers and, and, and students. So uh, this is my, my presentation. Uh, so thank you. Thank you so much for, for, for this moment with, uh, with all of you. Um, Andrea um, and John, um, thank you. Thank you for, for, for uh, the other companies uh, with uh, the projects are very uh, amazing. Um, so uh, any question for, for the moment? Uh, yes, thank you very much for uh, your presentation. We actually have uh, 
two uh, questions. Uh, so the first thing I would like to ask you is um, actually about, uh, if I understood correctly, you are also implementing trainings for teachers in the field of VR. So if you can tell me a bit more about that, uh, what do those trainings consist? How long are they? How many hours are needed to train the teachers per average? It's uh, in, in, in the previous slides, uh, I say that uh, virtual reality is a new tool for schools. So uh, maybe uh, in, uh, in a program training in may went, uh, may, may one or two months uh, to uh, six months is a very good date uh, to, to plan uh, a, a, training, a training for, for teachers and, and, and the students. Thank you. And there is another question. Uh, it was actually for uh, Ludus XR, but also uh, I think it can be uh, good for uh, Educa. So in which languages are the existing materials? At the moment, uh, the content is in, in are Spanish, but uh, Educa 360 is working right now in, in English uh, at the moment and another language. Yes, and for us, it's also mostly English, but it also depends on the partners we work with. I know work we are right now is in uh, Danish, German, Greece, French, and Italian, and there's maybe not an English version actually there, but all our other projects are normally English first, and then we translate it into the different partner countries we have. Okay, thank you to both of you for your answers. And uh, once again, thank you, Mr. Jose Antonio, for this uh, interesting presentation of your services and your company's work. Uh, now, according to the agenda, we have another presentation from another uh, participant from Spain. I'm not sure have they joined yet our live. So I would just like to check with uh, John if Invalent Technologies representative is already here. Uh, we are waiting for them to join, so probably we should not waste time and maybe move on and uh, let's see if they can manage to join us. Uh, so what's, what's next? Uh, yes, then in the meantime, while we are waiting for uh, Invalent Technologies, I would like to use this opportunity to also present another uh, project, uh, which was focused on uh, introducing VR technologies into education. Um, it is a project in which uh, our institution, uh, Studium, acted as a partner. So let me just share my screen and show you a bit more. Okay, I hope you can see my screen now. Yes. So the name of the project was Step Up, the development and improvement of the professional practice for students of a College of Applied Sciences from Vukovar. It was uh, funded by the European Union, but by the uh, European Social Fund, not Erasmus+. Plus. Uh, in this project, the coordinator was, as I already mentioned, the College of Applied Sciences, Lavoslav Ruzička from Vukovar, and partners on the project were uh, VURA, the development agency of the city of Vukovar, Adult Education Institution Studium, and the Secondary School of Economics, also from Vukovar. And I think it's interesting to mention that um, one of the companies that we cooperated with in this project was also Zulex, uh, that uh, we were able to hear at the beginning of this meeting, their presentation. Uh, so the project was uh, funded by the European Union, actually co-financed um, at the rate of uh, 85%. And uh, its uh, budget was over uh, 500,000 uh, euros. And uh, the rest, the uh, 25%, was funded by the state budget. Uh, the project lasted for 36 months, and it was actually very recently successfully finished in March 2023, so less than a month ago. 
the main purpose and the goal of the step up project was to improve and uh, to find better ways of implementation of professional practice for students of the College of Applied Sciences from Vukovar. Uh, we wanted to enable them to acquire practical knowledge and skills and also to increase their employability through use of uh, various techniques and VR technology was just one of them. The target group of the project were uh, students uh, who attended the college, uh, but also teaching and non-teaching staff of uh, education institutions. Uh, and uh, here we are coming to the part about the VR application which was developed. So the primary purpose of the application was to develop public performance skills in front of a large audience. So now I, I would like to show you a video where you can actually see what the application looked like. Uh, you will probably not be able to hear the sound, but it's in creation anyways. So here you can see that once you enter the app, you can first choose different options. Uh, they are related to the way that your audience is going to act. So you can choose various options here. And now you can see what it actually looks like once you enter uh, the scene. So your job is to make a public speech and you can see in front of you an audience. Uh, the room is actually similar to the one from the College of Applied Sciences. So students can feel like they are actually in their classrooms. And now, depending on the quality of your speech, the audience will have different reactions. So depending on how loud you speak, depending on how many breaks you take, how many word fillers you use, the audience will react uh, in a positive or a negative manner. So for example, if you're quiet for five seconds, let's say, you will start hearing background noises from the audience, which will indicate that they are losing their interest and that you need to speed up with your speech and motivate them a bit more. Okay, I think you uh, have gotten the idea of uh, what the app actually looks like. Uh, so yes, it was a project that is re uh, recently finished and it proved to be very successful. And we have received some quite positive uh, information and feedback from the students of the college and uh, even their uh, enrollment rates are actually going up. There is more interest from students now that they have implemented VR in their work. Uh, so yes, this was a step up project. I will also leave some materials related to it um, in uh, our Facebook uh, page. And uh, now I would like to check once again if uh, Invalon is going to join us. I think that uh, we have a problem connecting with uh, Invelon, uh, but they promised that they will send some material that we can share uh, with uh, some pre-recorded pre video, etc. So <laughs> let's leave it for another time. Uh, and uh, as I see, I don't know if you agree, maybe we can uh, have an, a similar meeting in the future with some other stakeholders, companies, organizations, etc. I don't know what's your opinion on that.
And uh, I think that uh, we don't have any other questions as I, as I see. Is anyone interesting to ask something? Now is your time. So we can just uh, move with the next steps for the project and then we can wrap it up. Uh, yes, I agree. And uh, I also agree with uh, the possibility of organizing a meeting like this uh, once again. Uh, so about the next steps of uh, the project. Today we have heard some interesting information from uh, VR providers. Uh, so I believe that in scope of this project, uh, our institutions will also have a possibility of procurement of some of the services from them. Uh, and also we are going to participate in a training Altogether, maybe other partners can say a bit more about uh, what's coming next. Uh, I think that uh, this, what is coming next is to buy some equipment for uh, the training centers and then uh, test them, use them inside uh, their classrooms. And after that, uh, there will be also a, a learning platform that will be cre created in the next few months. Uh, the purpose of this platform is to gather all this useful material that we have uh, here today and much more uh, than that uh, in one point. Uh, so we need the help from everyone that might have something to, uh, to share. Uh, if uh, you are a developer or a creator or a teacher that uses VR or creates something in VR environments, uh, we would like to have your uh, material in our platform. You will learn uh, more information about that very soon. So try to stay connected uh, either on uh, the Facebook page or on a, a Facebook group that we will create, but it, it, was, it is going to be uh, for uh, with invitation only for teachers. Am I right? Okay. Yes, it is. We're going to send out invitations after the meeting. And uh, yes, I believe today we've made the first step towards creating a community of vet teachers who are interested in VR. And uh, I think that a small network was already created today. So, um, that is great for the development of our project. And uh, if you all agree, and if there are no other questions and comments, I think we can wrap it up for today. Yeah. So thank you once again to all of the participants from our uh, project team, to all of the presenters of other VetVR projects, and also to the presenters from VR companies from Greece, Spain, and Croatia. Uh, we are looking forward to another meeting like this. And in the meantime, you can find all of the materials and uh, also some additional materials from the project that are yet to be created in our social media and uh, yes our facebook page and uh, facebook group thank you everyone thank you so much thank you so much bye bye thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 bye bye bye